Uh, welcome to the awards ceremony for the Youth Citizen Police Academy. We are very proud of these young people who are an important part of Evanston's future and an important part of the solution to our problems with violence today. So thank you all for coming and to every one of the graduates, my congratulations and Officer Spells, would you take it away? Sure will, thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, my name is Officer Lloyd Spells of the uh, Evanston Police Department. I am the program manager of our Youth Citizen Police Academy, uh, which is for ages 13 to 17. Uh, for students who are interested in criminal justice or law enforcement or just want to know why officers do what they do and how they do it. Uh, and we have our 2013 uh, candidates who are graduating today, uh, and I would like to present them to the city, starting with Mr. Jahan Haynes. Mr. Haynes, are you here? Mr. Zachary Hunt. Mr. Jake Marks. Mr. Brandon Roberson. His brother, Mr. Colin Roberson. Mr. Max Roberts. Congratulations. And last but not least, Mr. Amani Walker. Mr. Orrin Baker could not be with us today, but I'd like to present uh, a volunteer certificate of appreciation for class one, which was last year's uh, graduate volunteer this year, Ms. Diamond Sivright. I present to you the 2013 Youth Citizen Police Academy. Picture. Can we get can we get all the junior police academy graduates up front for a picture? Yes, he, he's Officer Spells. Can you bring them all forward?
ladies and gentlemen, I know many of you are here for the city council meeting. Uh, the council meeting will uh, begin after the planning and development committee meeting of the council, so we're probably 30 to 45 minutes prior before the council meeting will begin. Uh, we also need everyone in this room to have a seat unless you're working press. So for those of you who do not have a seat, you're welcome to uh, be in the ante room. The fire marshal is in the ante room, or he's here in the council chambers. When the ante room is full, we've made arrangements for overflow uh, seating uh, down the hallway uh, where we'll have a, a, a telecast of the meeting you can watch. So if you don't have a seat, you please leave the council chambers now. If you don't have a seat, you need to leave the room. That's what we said. Everybody else got it. All right, everyone, I believe we're going to get started now. Welcome to the July 22nd Planning and Development Committee meeting. Uh, we have a, um, a quorum, and I'm calling the meeting to order. Uh, first item on our agenda is approval of the regular meeting minutes of July 8th, 2013. Do I have a motion? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, the first item that we have to discuss is P1. Uh, this is approval of the application for home funds for a tenant-based rental assistance program by Connections for the Homeless. This was before us on July 8th. We asked for additional in, uh, information from both our staff and from uh, Connections, and I believe that's in the packet. So who would like to begin? My lights on. I'm sorry. Alderman Rainey. Um, Madam Chairman, I asked for that information regarding their... Um, ability to uh, follow up on uh, their successes in the past with similar programs and um, I'm, I'm satisfied with the results and therefore I would move uh, but let me preface I, I really want us to live up to the requirement that we have these three-month checkups um, therefore, I move approval of the application for home funds for a tenant-based rental assistance program by connections in the amount of $500,000 dispersed over a three-year period. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. And thank you to staff and connections for the information. It was very good. And it would be really helpful, Madam Chairman, if we would get that kind of support for our thought process prior to, you know, having to ask for it. Yep. Agreed. So. Uh, item P2, Resolution 44R13, authorizing a termination and restatement of, of obligations regarding the Church Street Plaza development. Move approval. Any discussion? But well, you might want to explain that Yes. We're not terminating our relationship. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the committee, uh, yes, indeed, we are not terminating the agreement. However, uh, since this agreement has been uh, in place since 1998, a number of the terms and conditions have been fulfilled, and the property owner has asked us uh, to uh, restate uh, the agreement uh, so that just the surviving obligations remain. Uh, they are looking at a, 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 a refinancing and a, a reorganization of their partnership that uh, owns the property, and, and this will be helpful to them as they move forward with that. Uh, Bruce Reed uh, from Arthur Hill is here somewhere in the mix. There he is, uh, and will be available to answer questions, but I think the staff report explains uh, the issue. 
Alderman Grover. Thank you, Madam Chair. I did answer a question I've had for a long time, which is how, did we, how do we come by the free hours of parking uh, through validation when you go to see a movie at um, Century Theaters? And I didn't realize that it was pursuant to this redevelopment agreement in place since 1998 that doesn't expire until 2020. It was the so. brilliant members of the City Council who were who voted Must and, and negotiated for that. Several uh, of them are right here right yeah. now. Right, yeah. indeed. Alderman indeed. Rainey, I think you so. might have made the motion. I might have seconded it. I okay, uh, will think of both of you every time. Um, I'm validating my parking ticket after seeing the movie. Thanks. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Now we're moving on to items P3 and P4. These are Ordinance uh, 86013, granting a plan development and special use at 1611-1629 Chicago Avenue, North Shore Residence. The difference between these two ordinances is uh, one contains a condition that requires the applicant to reserve at least 10% of all residential units in the project as affordable housing. And, and Madam Mayor, I'd like to ask Melissa Klotz, our interim zoning administrator, to come up and give a brief staff report. And I believe the applicant is here. and will be available to answer questions. Good evening, uh, Honorable Alderman. Melissa Klotz, uh, Zoning Planner and Interim Zoning Administrator. The North Shore Residence is a current facility on Chicago Avenue, and there is a proposal to both renovate the existing facility as well as construct an eight-story tower addition that would be in the adjacent lot where the outdoor pool currently exists. With the combined renovation and new tower, there would be a total number of 205 units, whereas the current facility has 185 units. The facility would be updating many of the existing mm -hmm. um, residential amenities, uh, including a banquet facility, uh, more food service options, and nicer units within the facility. The applicant is proposing a planned development for the eight-story addition and currently is not asking for any site development allowances and meets all zoning requirements with the exception of parking. The applicant is proposing to lease nine parking spaces from a city parking garage. And with that, I will let the applicants give a presentation. Thank you. Do you have to upload it first, the presentation? Great, thank you. Yeah, it, it might be helpful, perfect. Read my mind. Uh, my name is John Majewski. I'm with Majewski Architects, which is located on the fifth floor of the Chandler's Building here in Evanston. Um, we've been based in Evanston with 15 architects for the past four and a half years. We love it and we love being in that building. Um, I'm here tonight representing my clients, which are both here. Uh, Jeff Michael is, is next to me and Danny Michael is in um, the seat back there. They are with Horizon Realty Group. They are actually the developer that is developing the building. Um, I'm formally the applicant just because of the fact that I submitted the application. What I wanted to do tonight was just kind of quickly walk you through and not maybe go into the same amount of depth as we did for the previous meetings that we've gone through in um, the sense that time is something that if there's a lot of questions, you can kind of run through and ask me later. But very briefly, the North Shore residence um, is what we were currently calling the building, was formerly known as the North Shore Retirement Home. It has been operating as a retirement community since the mid-60s. Originally, it was built in 1919. Um, as a 350 room hotel. The building itself has gone through all kinds of different things over the years. For the most part, it's slowly been renovated, remodeled, and slowly been taken away from what it was originally. Our goal fundamentally, as far as the older structure goes, is to build, to bring all of the public spaces, make sure I get this going public spaces back to what they were. So as I walk you through the presentation tonight, we're gonna to talk about a couple different things. The parcel is actually this large piece of development which stretches from the corner of Davis on Chicago Avenue, all the way up to basically the restaurant found, which is located here. Those parcels just to the north of where the existing pool will not be affected at all by this development. 
This development is to renovate, restore the original hotel structure and add a new addition onto the north side of the building. This just shows you the parcel that is going to actually have the development on the north side and gives you a sense of scale of that particular parcel. As we look at the building now, it might get a little confusing, but here's the line between old and new. So this is the older building. Many of you are familiar with the ballroom to give you a sense of scale. If you walk into the door on Davis or the front door over on Chicago, right now you would notice that all of the space in the center, which was the old historic grand lobby, has been filled in with offices over the years. What we're fundamentally doing in this plan is putting everything back to what it was as close to what we can figure out um, during the 1920s. So there'll be the entrance will be reused and primarily fundamentally focus on Davis Street as an entrance for the ballroom space. The old lobby will be restored from both connections on Chicago and Davis and restored back to its kind of grandeur that it originally had. The ballroom will get back a lounge area adjacent to it, which is just a kind of seating area right now. The double uh, kitchen is going to be completely removed and restored or rebuilt to a brand new kitchen. The dining area fundamentally stays the same, just as kind of completely redone and refurbished. And there'll be a new bistro concept that is added in, and then a smaller library space, which will also be added. North of this line, or to the left of that line, you will walk down this hallway and enter into a grand kind of winter garden space, which is really a space that we're creating behind all the retail. What's interesting about this building is most people don't know what's going on inside of here because fundamentally these are just retail spaces all along the street. The blue area represents Tapas Barcelona. This will be new retail that will reinforce the street front. In the rear of the building, there'll be a new pool to replace the pool that was there, and there'll be the elevators that will lead you up to the new section of the building. This is a view inside that winter garden space. The intent is to really get you into a kind of a larger public space, even than what was there, um, and really be, kind of create a gathering and a focal point for the residents of this project. The lobby spaces will be restored back, fundamentally to what we've been able to figure out as far as trim, molding, um, and profiles that you see here. The lounge space is going to be a new space. It's, it's not fundamentally what was there historically, but it's one that will supplement the ballroom space for overflow, pre-function, and really bring this ballroom space back to a viable thing for the community and for this project as a whole. As we go up the building itself, right now, this is actually in the lower level, there's a bunch of existing uses in the building. Um, the existing building, most of those are going to be moved over to the new building. They would include a theater, um, wellness center, the offices that were upstairs, a fitness center, um, arts and crafts, and those are the key kind of things that are going to be located around this kind of round stair grand space that works its space down to the lower level. As we work our way up, this is the plan you had previously seen in color. As you start to go up, we're in the process under a separate permit of taking the 185 units that are in the building today and converting that down to 140 units. That's by combining two hotel rooms to make a one bedroom, uh, things like that. Basically, we'll have studios, one bedrooms, and two bedroom units within the, the older part of the building. As you go to this side, they are not at all connected on the upper levels. They're only connected on the first floor. You get to your own elevator, you go up, move to the front, there's five units in this front area, this courtyard, five units at the rear. It does set slightly back from the rear property line. That continues up till we get to the rooftop where there are five uh, units that front Chicago Avenue and then we terraced it down at the back to create a rooftop garden, which will have a kind of wonderful view at that height um, of the lake and of the Evanston Park system. The units themselves in the new building are all primarily one bedrooms. They are range anywhere from 550 square feet down to about 480 square feet. They include a very adequate bedroom. Some have a walk-in closet. There's a very nice kitchen. Um, again, food service is a part of your stay at the North Shore residences, but this kitchen and this facility is supplemental. This is independent living, and that's primarily one of the main reasons we're here tonight is to talk about that special use. The building itself only has a few kind of special things that we need to do in that stormwater detention, which we're doing below the loading dock area. This just shows you where that stormwater is actually going to be located. This is the existing survey. 
This is a shot showing you where the site is. Here's the older building. These are the buildings that are across the street. The new building itself is trying to pick up on the massing of the old building, but not duplicated exactly. It is eight stories tall, where the existing building is six stories. A couple of the points that we were asked to observe would be if we could pick up on the brick line of the existing building, line up the windows, and keep a similar pattern. These were things that we um, were not required to do, but they were suggested to us from staff, meetings with some of the historical people involved. And then we're picking up on changing to a brick. Our building will all be masonry at the upper portions to pick up on the Tudor-esque idea without being Tudor. These two materials will become very close in color. Um, the rendering just shows the brick slightly different. And then the central mass just kind of is trying to pick up on the element of the existing hotel. This is just another view from either side of the building. These are the elevations as you look around the building. The front of the building itself does have balconies. Um, the balconies will be screened with the handrail. The handrail itself will be a metal panel so that you won't see things that are up on the balcony. Everything there will be screened. The north side of the building is the side that's adjacent to the property line. Um, that side, we've just demarcated this area and this area by slightly recessing this portion. We do have to keep in mind, although there is nothing planned for the future, this is a property line wall. So the idea of windows and glazing along it um, is something that we really cannot do. The inside, this is kind of a little bit different. This cuts right through the center of the building and you're looking into the courtyard. So you see that first floor winter garden space, the large skylight, this large kind of open air courtyard that leads you up the building. And these are just the elevators that you see in the background. The rooftop garden is here, and then there's some uh, units up at the front that I had mentioned. This is a shadow study that shows that during the entire year, the sun basically has its longest shadow in the winter, which is usually one that is excluded because it's so short, but even it does not leave the property line as far as affecting any of the neighbors. Rooftop garden, just wanted to show you the landscaping that we have done for that area. It's pretty much perimeter buffer landscaping trellised area, envision a lot of um, wonderful rocking chairs, shaded areas for the residents to really have the opportunity to go up on the roof. Whole vast amount of different ideas from the plantings that will go around, the way that we're treating that, planters, different landscape materials, all of this is stuff that we've kind of gone through in detail. And this kind of just gives you again that quick overview of the exterior. So what I wanted to just summarize with was that we're here tonight not out of anything that I think we've done. There is really nothing we're particularly asking for. The building itself was not rezoned as independent living when I think the zoning was changed for whatever reason, although this use has always been on the site. Um, so what we're asking is to bring both the non-conforming existing structure, which has independent living in it, up to current standards by having it um, the special use granted, and then also to have the special use granted for the new addition we're adding on. The fundamental net change once we renovate the units will be that we will add an additional 20 units to the overall development to end up with a total of 205 units. That does require the nine parking spaces. Um, I would point out that the residents here do not have vehicles, so although we will get those parking spaces, they will probably not be used. Uh, there just is not a need. The typical residents here range in age from 75 to 85, 86 years old, and it's just not practical. Although we are looking for a slightly younger demographic, it's probably more in that 70 to 75 year range. Um, and then I also wanted to point out that's why we're here for the special uses for the independent living. The planned unit development process that we're here for is really triggered because our site is larger than 30,000 square feet. So it's nothing that we've done and the building itself is larger than 20,000 square feet. So it's just a part of your process to, to allow you to see larger projects and understand exactly what impact they're going to have on the community. I understood. Good. The last thing I did want to point out as far as parking, there was a great deal of debate I think it's some of our earlier meetings about the fact that the ballroom may require parking. And I want to be honest and say our goal in doing this project is to encourage that the ballroom become successful. And I'd actually point out that it was here before there were even cars here. So it's, it's been here for a long time. That's really one of the original parts of the building. Thank you. Uh, I have three lights. 
Alderman Grover, did you have your light on? I did, thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Majewski, and uh, uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, for... Alderman Grover, do you have your mic I on? I do now, thank you to Alderman Rainey. Um, I'm looking, I had a couple of questions that really went to not the project itself, which I think sounds just great. And uh, I'm glad you're undertaking it. I'm glad we're increasing our capacity for more senior independent living in Evanston. It's good to know that there's a demand for it and that our market supports that here. My questions actually are probably for Ms. Klotz, and that's about uh, the questions that I asked in an email to her this afternoon about the affordable housing, proposed affordable housing set aside. and. Um,